Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we have a fabulous guest that we're going to talk about all the stuff she's doing in property because she's a bit of a superstar. Now you listeners and viewers, you've been moaning, you've been complaining, you know Richard, I mean it's okay for you up in Scotland, you know, uh, it's, it's okay investing in property up there, you know, you get a house for 10 pence up there, that's what I've heard. What about the rest of us? What about the rest of us in the UK? What about England? What about that? Can you, can you prove that property can work down there? Yes, yes I can. What about... A lass from Yorkshire. Hey, what about that lad? Hey, that was not bad. That was not bad. That wasn't bad. We have one today. We've got a superstar today, a lady by the name of Rochelle Gilburn. Rochelle. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank how was you. The, how was the accent? How was the impersonation? It was actually no quite good. I'm impressed. It's not bad, yeah. it? I mean, I've been listening to you a lot. A lot. Right. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. You've had a long drive up through the beautiful scenery. I have. Uh, know you well, so full disclosure. I know Rochelle through Paul McFadden's property project training. She's in his special platinum group, all sorts of things. She's doing stuff, so I know her already. And that's why I wanted you on the show, because your story, like so many others, can inspire everyone else. You know, you can give encouragement and pass on things that this is what's possible. This is what you can do. These are the kind of projects you can get involved in, you know. So there's folks listening in who might be in property just now. Maybe they're just in a job and they fancy investing property on the side. You know, well, how do you do that? And what's possible? And what, what kind of numbers are involved, etc. So that's why I want you here. This is great. But let's start with you before this world, before I knew you, this <laughs> property world and all this amazing stuff you're doing. What is the backstory? You know, do, how did you kind of start out? What career path have you taken, etc.? So I worked for the same company for 14 years before 14 I came years. into property, yeah. Wow. I, I started off there as a waitress. It was a greyhound racing track. Oh, no um, way! And I, I was a waitress there while I was at, at college and I was doing graphic design at college. Ah. And then when they found out that I did graphic design, they were sort of rubbing their hands together because they thought, oh, you can come in and edit our posters for minimum wage <laughs> <laughs> instead of paying someone else £60 an hour to do it. So, <laughs> so I started off doing that and right. then I set up the Facebook page page for them right. um, so I started posting all the social media with Facebook Twitter that, that sort of thing and um, then I went to uni and, and did art and while right. I was at uni I, I started um, getting into a bit of uh, PR and a bit more marketing did some work experience and, and that sort of thing and then the right. ground track offered me a, a full-time job in marketing when I finished uni and it was good really because I did pretty much everything I, I did the the websites i did the um like the marketing campaigns right. the facebook ads google ads so pretty much everything marketing and then we also had the same sort of um the camp same campaigns same same events on every single year so i had to get good at um sort of saying the same things in different ways <laughs> ah, right, which, okay. uh, which i think has definitely helped me coming into property and having to post on on LinkedIn on and everything like that. Media. So yeah, so I think some people see what I'm doing now and think, oh my God, how did she get so good so quickly? But I've actually yeah. had about 10 years experience of writing, of making something really mundane sound, in, sound interesting. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's where where I uh, I started off in, in my career. That's fantastic. And, yeah. I love how you've done that, you know, the, the one place, one company, but no, I'm not getting pigeonholed here. You know, I'm, I'm doing all of this. I'll That's try it. bits of this and bits of that. You know, for any young folk listening, you should have that in your brain, you know, because you said to yourself that first job was the waitress role. You know, well, you don't need to end there. You don't need to pigeonhole yourself there. So that's tremendous. Yeah. That's Why cool. the graphic stuff and the media stuff and the art stuff, has that always been a thing? Yeah, I've always been the type of person where I was always quite academic, but right. I loved doing sort of the, the art side of things as well. Right. And actually, when I left school, I went to sixth form and I was planning on being a doctor. <laughs> and then, what? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was doing psychology, biology, chemistry and maths. And oh like I did, God. I did enjoy it, but at the same time there was something missing. It was the creative side. Right. So I went to college to do art, and then what I found with that was the academic side was missing. Right. So I was trying to find something where I could get both both sides of the mm. sort of yeah, the two parts. Of yeah, the brain and stuff. That's, that's it. The, and then like when I found brain, marketing, so. that was perfect because I was doing Gosh. lots of writing blogs and, and newsletters and that sort of thing. But I was also doing the designing the posters and being more creative. So I was yeah. using both sides of my brain. And, and that's when the I psychology part of the puzzle. As exactly. Well, haven't that's you? it. That's and that's cool. when I feel most satisfied when I'm I'm balanced between those two. So I think I'd have 
got really bored being a doctor. Right. I, art was, was not enough for me. I yeah. didn't feel like I was challenging myself enough. So doing doing both of them works really, really well for That's me. That's cool. That's a good bit of self-awareness. Yeah. You know, knowing what floats your boat, so to speak. Yeah. And you're keeping that going then. You're, you're, you know, you've got the creative side, but you've got the business side, the number side, yeah, everything else. That's you've got it. A nice it's balance translated here. into the into the business where I can yeah. can do do both sides of things. So if we know all of that, where on earth did property start? From? <laughs> what, how does that force itself in? Well, it was it was really strange. So at one one point, I just everything everyone I met was in property. Like I, was, <laughs> I went to I went to Vegas for my thirtieth birthday with my friends, and oh, I ended on the way back from Vegas. I was sat on the plane, and I on my, I was on my own, and I ended up sat next to a guy who was an estate agent, and he was in property, and we spoke right. for like seven hours just about property. Oh my um, God. I got a. I had a, a little job between um, working at the dogs and getting into into property. And that w- was a woman who owned a few estate agents, a mortgage advising company, oh, yeah. a, a maintenance company. Um, I had another lady who was a family friend who owns an estate agent, and she got me doing some marketing for her. And it was just like lots of different <laughs> property people, but the the main one was that I met Ellie Mackay in oh. on holiday in Cuba. Right. That was what in yeah. Cuba? Seriously? So three, Is that where yeah, you met Ellie? So three before she got before they got involved in property. So I was on holiday with my with my husband and my kids and right. it was chucking it down with rain the entire time we were in Cuba. There was no kids club, it was an awful hotel. Oh, we were there for like a family wedding. Um but oh, no. Ellie and Mark's kids were the same age as my kids, so they just they played together, we Brilliant. got we got talking, they kept each other entertained and it turned out she lives half an hour away from me. That's amazing. So when in we got, Cuba. Yeah, half in, an hour in away. Cuba, yeah. Uh, so when we got back off of holiday, we just kept in touch and met up with the kids and everything. And, and it was really, so she'd not even started in property at that point. And then we'd, we'd go out with them and Ellie would be telling me and Mark would be telling my husband, and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to do this property course and we're going to buy properties with other people's money. And we would just, we'd get home and we're like, do you understand what they're doing? I'm like, <laughs> what what no. were they talking about? <laughs> Literally not got a clue. Sounds dodgy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was dodgy my case. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But it, it was one of those things every time, we, because Ellie's really into marketing, every time mm. we met up, we'd talk loads about marketing and what ah, was going on. I and I started to get a better understanding of uh, of what they were they were doing right um and then so when i worked at the ground stadium my husband was the managing director of the stadium so we we ah. both worked really closely together and then in october 2018 he had a heart attack and died God. so um it was like really sudden he went poorly or anything like that so wow um I'd then like my whole world got turned upside down and it was like i got i'd got a four-year-old that. and a two-year-old to look after yeah um and it was kind of one of those things where i was like what what now like, i don't know what to do with my life i'd sort of got a, a plan in my mind of where my life was going yeah. but like hol- holidays planned family life planned yep. like and it, and I was I'd, I'd become quite I was settled in my job and I was just working part time and I'd probably lost a lot of my my ambition before then right. and I was just like plodding along and just enjoying sort of a, a simple family life. This is, this is um, fine. I know yeah, where I am. I know who I am. That's and it. I've got these plans in me. And, and then bang. It, so that yeah. So then like I had six weeks of sort of planning all the the funeral and the finances and all that sort of stuff and I just threw myself into it because I'm like if I sit still too long like mm. I'm going to fall to pieces or something right. um and then after after the funeral I just went straight back to work did you yeah I was like I can't just sit at home on my own doing nothing because then I'm going to start overthinking Damn. and yeah what am I going to do so I just went back to work but it just wasn't the it wasn't the same obviously my husband wasn't there mm. so it was noticeable like noticeably different so like it was noticeably different at home that it wasn't around it was also like that at work yeah you get them both places yeah. yeah and there weren't many people around at work sometimes i'd be the only person in the office so i was still getting really lonely right. so that's when i decided okay i'm gonna leave this job and do something else but i was looking for for part-time work so that i could fit it around the, the kids and everything kids, yeah. but there was nothing that everything seemed to be like a downward step if i was going part-time and there was so much competition for the jobs because there's such limited mm. part-time jobs so then i started looking at full-time jobs but 
I, I had a few interviews and they were saying, oh, you'll finish at half past five. And I'm like, okay, well, the kids can go to after school club until quarter to six, but there's no mm. way I'm going to be able to get from that job to after school club in time. So yeah. then I'm going to have to get a childminder, but I'm not going to be seeing my kids because I'm going to be at work all the time and they've already lost the dad. Yeah. So I don't want them to be away from, from the mum all the time as well. Yeah. So I ended up taking the job with the one that I was just telling you about with the um, the estate agents. And, right. and that was a part-time job and it was some working from home. And right. But I just didn't feel, it felt like a step backwards and I didn't feel challenged. All right, okay. Um, just kind of going through the motions. Yeah, really. that's it. Uh-huh. And then I'd, I'd been talking, I'd inherited some money and I'd been talking to Ellie about how I could like invest it and I was mm-hmm. thinking about building a, a property portfolio. Oh, right, um, okay. So she started looking for properties for me. Um, and then the more we talked about it, the more I was like, actually, you know what? I need a challenge in my life. You know, I'm a single mum to two kids. I need, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> I, I need something to uh, get Let's my get teeth more into. Of a challenge. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, so she she put me in touch with like the the team, and I did the the week with Paul where he goes on Facebook Live every, oh, right, every day. Right. And I know Elliot like recommended it to a few other friends, and they'd sort of and, and I have since, and they never end up doing it all. They'll do one yeah. and then they fall off it. But I was like every night I was there, and I absolutely loved it. It grabbed you, didn't yeah, it? it did. Um, so then I signed up straight away. and Wanted to do the the first the first course that was available, <laughs> and. Uh, Absolutely loved it. Yeah, it's just, yeah that's it. That's phenomenal. Yeah, so that that, that's how I got into phenomenal. property. Wow, <laughs> that's uh, there's a few twists and turns there. Yeah. I mean, my goodness, folk listening in and watching in should take a lot of encouragement from that, you know, because if you can bounce back from that kind of life trauma, if you like, yeah. you know, and took control of the situation, you know, because you never planned that. No. You never set it up that way. But it's how you respond to these things. Exactly. You know, I think that's always the type of person I've I've been. It's like, well, actually, I could just lay in bed all day every day and not not yeah. do anything. Yeah. But what's that? that what good's that going to do? So yeah. I do this. For, I do it for myself, my kids, and then I'm like, like I know now life is too short, so yeah. I don't want to waste it. I want oh, to exactly. make the most of it and be the the best version of myself that I can I can be. I love that. That's tremendous. That's, I can tell you, you've, you've knocked me for six. What a story. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's when you find everything that's behind someone's story. They've all got their wee, wee things in life they've dealt with or dealing with yeah. or whatever. You know, that's, that's so so amazing what you've done. And the kids, they, they love a lot from that. It's funny how, how often this comes up. You know, you get chatting to guests and stuff, but it's the people around them. It's like, you know, oh, my husband's really supportive and we've grown together. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, my kids, they're kind of watching what I'm doing and I'm, I'm, able, I'm able to have the freedom to get them to school. And then I go, my business and then they're starting to watch oh what's mum up to and what's why is mum phoning that person and such yeah. and it opens their eyes and it you know expands their horizons it's it's the full thing it's an amazing Definitely. thing so do you take a lot of kind of satisfaction from that freedom and what you're able to do with them and for them yeah Is definitely for yeah you? yeah being able to so they still go to after school club and stuff to yeah. give me extra time but yeah. i can drop them off i can pick them up uh-huh. and we get to spend a lot of time together i do some work in the evenings so right. even uh, my mum kept my mum ringing me up last week and uh, one minute she'd ring me and i'm like i'm just on my way to my, my martial arts class and then i'll be like just on my way to the hairdressers <laughs> Just on my way to PT, and she's like, "Do you actually do any work?" I'm like, oh. yes, I do. But like, but now I've got the flexibility of being able to. I've got a martial arts class that's at eleven o'clock on a couple of days a week, and I can right. go to that without having to Brilliant. to work, like book time off and yeah. and worry about. Oh well, I've not got childcare in the evening, so I can mm. do work in the evening, and I can go and do the things that yeah, I need so. to be away from the house yeah. for in the daytime. Yeah. So it has given me a lot of uh, flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah, that's, that's a powerful, powerful word that is that that's a great thing to share with people you know listening in and you know that might be curious about starting that yeah this is one of the things that are there you know it's one of the potentials having that that choice that freedom to choose something you know where, no i'm going to balance my home life this way and i'm going to balance my business life this yeah. way and throw in health things and fitness classes and martial arts and you name it you know it. really really enjoying life loving life no, it's tremendous. Cool, okay. So we did that. We came into this new world and <laughs> we're learning all these things and strategies and tactics and options. It's a gigantic world. It is. You know, HMOs and land developments and service accommodation and flips and portfolios, there's a lot of it. What was your first thing? What was the first step, first project? So um, 
I'd just started up my, my business. I did a protege in January last year. Right. I'd literally just got my website up and running. I'd started doing my marketing and then we went into lockdown. Oh, so that God. was I said that, <laughs> that was my first challenge. <laughs> that's, a fun, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah coronavirus. So like, oh yeah, my goodness. Okay, so the property market's now closed. <laughs> I've just spent like a bit of money getting everything set up, ready to, to go, and I can't go out and do properties. And I'd had like I got a couple of charity events like balls to go to and stuff that we were really looking forward to thinking, you know, I can meet potential investors there. Yeah, of course. And and that sort of thing. And then I was like, well, what do I what do I do now? Mm. Like and I think a lot of people sort of would would have just given up at at that point. Yeah. But I thought, right, I'm at home. I got put on furlough from the uh, the marketing job I was I was doing. Right. Which I was kind of I was relieved at because after protege I sort of went into work on the Monday morning. I was like, I just <laughs> want to be working on my own business. <laughs> <laughs> different eyes. Yeah. Oh, wait, it, was, it was just it was a crazy feeling because I'd not really gone into protege expecting to set up a a qu- a company as such I just wanted to use it so that I could then go out and find my own properties yeah. to build my own portfolio and that was sort of right. the initial goal but coming out of Protégé I was just buzzing and just wanted to take on the world which <laughs> I, I still do it sort of it, it, I'd like I think over the years doing the same job even though I'd really enjoyed it I have sort of lost a, a, a fire lost a spark mm. within me and then coming on Protégé like reignited that yeah, but right. yeah. okay okay and, uh, and I, I found I found that spark again. So when it came to going into into lockdown, I was mm. like, that, "Well, that's good because it means I can I can focus on setting up my business. But yeah. what parts of my business can I do from home? And that's when I really built up my LinkedIn presence. And right. I did lo- I was doing loads of networking. I was like connecting with loads of people on LinkedIn, posting mm-hmm. every day, and it just people just seemed to like what I was posting. Brilliant. And you know, I was put. Po- I'd, I'd never done any property before, so yeah. I couldn't go out and say, oh, here's a property that I've I've renovated, and I couldn't say, here's a viewing that I'm at, because we weren't allowed to go and do viewings. So it was, exactly. And I was stuck in the house, so you, 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 nobody had got very much going on, so it was thinking, what can I actually post about? <laughs> so I was posting about all sorts of like um, audio books I was listening to, like a lot of mindset stuff. I'd post mm-hmm. about activities I would do with my kids, mm-hmm. just things that I'd find on Facebook, like... Sometimes I'd see something on Lad Bible that everyone was finding interesting, and I'd be like, "Oh, that looks cool. I'll I'll post that on my LinkedIn." I'm going to talk about that. Yeah, and people just seemed to respond really well to to what I had to say, and yeah. it it built up quite quite quickly. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so that was sort of the the first lockdown, and right. then once the property market opened back up, I then went out and started to to do the viewings again right. and started putting offers in. But it did take quite a while to sort of get any any traction yeah of course uh, it was september last year when i got my first office accepted and that was a flip that i was by buy, buying myself right and right. that's actually only just complete now it went on the market is yesterday this one of the ones we're talking about right yeah I, remember folks when it's safe to do so make sure you go to the show notes page you'll see all of the links to rochelle's uh, media profiles hook in there connect with her and you'll see what we're talking about because she does loads of great posts uh, and shows you examples of properties before after all sorts of things right so that's what that one is. Right? Yeah, okay, so that, that was my first dots. my first property that I found. And it, yeah, it's only just completed sort of, what is it, eight months, wow. nine months later. But it was it was a great experience because it was my own and I saw it through the process. And now yeah. I'm like, right, okay. So that thing that I've, I thought I could do, I yeah. now know that I can do. I've it's proved there. it to myself. I think a lot of other people believe that I could do it. And I've always yeah. been honest with people. Like, I've signed up a lot of investors now mm-hmm. and I've always been honest with them and said like, I am brand new to this, mm-hmm. but to, uh, my experience is in marketing. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, marketing, property, like I don't really get the connection. Yeah. But it's my job to market and find the properties and market and find the investors, and then I'm bringing the two together. Exactly. And then it's only really been since January this year that my job's sort of changed. I'm obviously still doing those things, but now I've got like renovations that I'm managing and you know I'm talking to solicitors, I'm talking to estate agents, accountants, all these yeah. these different aspects of the job. So it's no longer just the marketing job. It's growing into to something something else. It's amazing. So that first one, when you were going for that first purchase, do you yeah. remember it? Was it nervous? Was it excitement? Was it Yeah, <gasps> well I'd put in quite a lot of offers right. and they'd not been getting accepted with this one. Um it was on it was on the market. Mm-hmm. It was on for like hundred and fifty five thousand. Right. I um I put in an offer at hundred and thirty thousand and it got rejected and they said no, we've already had offers over hundred and forty. Right. Um so we just left it at that and then they came back and they were like, 
how close to 140 can you get? Because I think it had been on the market so long, they'd rejected so many offers, but then the offers uh, had stopped coming in. See. Um, so then it was just, okay, well, we can actually go up to 135 right. and it's still going to make a decent profit. But right. I wasn't buying that one. I wasn't too bothered about the profit. For me, it was more about the experience. Right, and, let's and, get and into yeah, this. Yeah, let's just get it. If it had broken even, I'd have yeah. been perfectly happy because it was just about getting my, my teeth into it and feeling like, you know, I'm actually in property and I'm not just doing, doing marketing. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so now it's gone on the market. It's gone on for £15,000 more than what I was expecting. Fantastic. And they think I'll, I'll probably get more than that Eat as well. That so, as well. yeah. Oh, so, it's my. been a, a nice little first flip and obviously a sign of what the, the market's doing. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Very true. But in between sort of having that offer accepted in September and, and now, mm. um, I've completed on several for investors. Yeah. Um, I've got a, a renovation that's going on at the moment that I'm joint venturing with one of my investors on. Brilliant. I've got another renovation that I'm doing, which is a buy to let for one of my investors. And Great. then I've got loads more going through conveyancing. So it's uh, everything's it's piling up. Things, yeah, yeah exactly. Juggling all these balls at the same that's time. It, but that's what I enjoy. Like, I, I hate nothing more than just being bored. I like to have right. lots of things going on. And the more things I've got going on, the better yeah. I perform personally. That's it. Brings you out. You yeah. Know, like it, kind of fires you up what you were talking about earlier that's it if I've I just got it. one job and I just like oh, yeah. not got much to do now and I get bored and then you lose that momentum very true and I think that's one very of the things true. that's been important for me over the last year and a half since doing Protégé I've I think some people think I'm like the hardest working person in the world and I'm really not apart from your mum <laughs> Yeah, my mum knows. My mum knows the truth. <laughs> she knows the truth. She's never at the hairdressers and the martial arts classes. This is terrible. Exactly. I'm. I'm not the hardest working person. I've got friends who work far harder than me, but it's what it's been for me is the consistency. It's the yeah. being consistently posting on LinkedIn, consistently doing viewings consistently yep. putting in offers yeah. and that's just sort of built up to to something where i now feel really confident talking to investors and i know that i can find them what they're what they're looking for it's brilliant yeah I've that's the thing because uh, your your business as we said earlier you can do so many things in property you know you might be listening to rochelle and think oh i don't fancy that but or oh, i quite like this oh, that's cool you know everybody does different things your business at the moment, you're, you've set it up that you are helping a lot of people. So you're helping sellers. You've got yeah. your whole South Yorkshire business of, you know, I can help you sell your home and stuff. You're helping them. But you're helping these investors you're talking about as well because they're trying to get, you know, um, good returns in their money yeah. and so on. But they don't have your skills. They don't have your contacts, so on and so forth. So it's amazing how many different people you're, you're helping. And I noticed one, you're, you're speaking there about a long project, you know, you putting an offer for this and it's yeah. only just flaming getting on the market a comparison to that is you've done another one recently where you thought was it two weeks or something yeah two and a half Completed. weeks <laughs> my goodness it helped that the seller was amazing the investor was amazing right. and it was just a case of i agreed the the price on on that day right oh the solicitors obviously were amazing as well uh, agreed <laughs> the pr price on that day two and a half weeks later we'd completed and I was getting the uh, getting the builders in, so That's I'm. I, I know, sort of. I've, I've been I've, I've been aware that you can complete as quickly as three weeks, but actually, like being aware of it and actually putting it into Seen into it. practice yeah. is uh, amazing. So now I feel confident going out to the sellers and being like, if you actually need a really quick sale, yeah, we can we can do this. It's not yeah. just a. I can prove it's it. It's not just a myth. It. Yeah. So yeah. That, it's not just marketing. That's it. I've actually done this, yeah. and I can help you. And one thing I'm really keen to do. So obviously, I, I want to build a business. Business. I want to build a big business and I want to make money from it but yeah. I, I want to make sure that everyone in the scenario is winning and mm -hmm. I don't want to I don't want to make a seller feel like they're being pressurized into selling a property ridiculously low yes. I'm like, I, I want to make sure they're getting a fa fair price that they're happy with yep. that it works for my investor and that it also works for me so that everyone exactly. walks away from the the transaction feeling happy so that's I one of that. that's sort of like the the ethos I guess of like my my business and yeah. I'm um, I think I'm doing things a little bit differently to what some people are doing. Like I'm trying to, with my house buying company, I'm trying to get my face out there so people know who I am. I've got my, my face on my adverts, which seems to be doing really well with, yeah. especially sort of an older audience because right. pe what people tend to say to me is they're like, I like that you're a woman. And, is that right? Yeah, I, I like that you're a woman. Yeah, good, I think they're so good. used to like people in property being like big businessmen and maybe That's feeling it. a little bit intimidated by them. And, yep, yeah, totally. so to see sort of a relatively young woman going in and I think they're just it's building that that trust yeah 
Aye, that's right. I can, I can well work with me. her. I can deal with her. Aye, yeah. She's got a good ethos. ethos. Aye, exactly. That's why we love you about you know, you have you've got that part of the puzzle because there's too many negative stories in property world, you yeah. know, that the, the press would dig up, you know, and bad landlords and, you know, people who are, you know, taking advantage of people in yeah. vulnerable positions. That's horrible. That should never happen. Definitely. And it doesn't need to happen. And you show that, you know, you can genuinely help people try to sell their homes yeah. because you can come in your business can do a super fast quick sale, yeah. you know, to get them what they need and at a good price for them as well. I love that. That's it. So the investor, that there's people who are selling, they might be listening to that just now and they can see this on your, your uh, social media platforms. The investors who are, you know, working with you, how is it you can help them then? You know, someone listening in just now, you know, they've got the money, but they're far too yeah. busy. They've got a high profile job. You know, they just, they know they should invest. Yeah. They know they're losing money in their bank accounts. It's terrible interest rates. What is it you can do for them? Yeah, it's it's exactly that really. I've um, I've had quite a few conversations with people who tend to be based down south, sort of, um, you know, London, further oh, right south. Down those yeah, areas. Right, yeah, right. not just Yorkshire. That's in the north. Yes, in the north. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they they're based down south. They know they want to invest up north because we get high higher yields. Yeah. So they they're doing all the traditional stuff. They're looking on they're looking on right move. I've got I've got one lady who I've just signed up, and she was. Uh, she's a nurse and she was on a on her day off she'd sit there she'd go through right move she'd do what right. work out all the figures she's like right okay i want to view these five properties so she'd right. get on the phone to the estate agents book all the viewings and mm -hmm. for the following friday when she's off work and then all through the week she's getting phone calls saying oh sorry that one's <laughs> sold that one's sold and she's end up with one viewing and it's not ah, worth the traveling up see um, so she she's struggling to she, she's struggling with the time, mm -hmm. so she's and she's struggling to to find the deals. Yeah. So what I'm able to do because I'm full time in property and I'm viewing lots of properties and sometimes deals do come through right move. Yeah. But you've got to be able to act quickly with it. You can't be waiting a, a week to I to saw. go and and do the viewings. But then I've also got my my own marketing and my own network where I'm getting lots of properties from. Um, and I know at the moment, I think there's a lot of people out there, investors who are struggling to, to find anything that's worth buying. Yeah. But because of the sort of reputation that I've built up and because of the amount of time I'm putting into it, I'm getting lots of leads and lots of things turning into, into deals. That's and brilliant. yeah. Find, finding the the things that other other people aren't. Yeah, exactly. And then giving those investors what yeah. they're looking for. So yeah. I've got some some investors who are looking to to build portfolios. So where right. where I find properties, I've got quite a big area that I cover. Right. Um, so it's Barnsley, Rotherham, Sheffield, right. a bit into Chesterfield. I've seen Sheffield mentioned quite a lot in your posts. Yeah, and stuff. yeah Sheffield. Right, okay. Sheffield. I've not had any buy to let properties there. I've only had. Mm -hmm. It's really good for flips. Is it? Whereas right. when you get to Barnsley, Rotherham, Chesterfield on the outside, they're mm -hmm. they're really good for for rental properties. Ah, uh, getting good so, yields there and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And is the demand quite good there as well? Are you yeah. Finding that in those areas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's definitely a, the, the rental market's as crazy as the housing market at the moment. Okay. So everyone's That's queuing brilliant. up to to get houses. So it's it's yeah. working well. So yeah, I've got a, a, some investors who are looking for rental portfolios. Some who are looking for flips. Mm -hmm. Some who are looking to joint venture with me. So I've just started one last week that's a joint venture. And then I've got another one going through conveyancing that's that's a joint venture. Um, brilliant. So yeah. Can you share any kind of numbers and stuff with those as an example? Anything uh, you remember off the top of your head? Yeah. So the the, the flips are, are really good. Both, both the joint venture flips are very, very similar where right. The, the properties are one's 170,000, one's 180,000 purchase price. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I've just started, it's a it's a strange one. It's a it was two houses being knocked into one downstairs, right. um, but they've not knocked through upstairs. Right. So, but it's not just like a you know two normal terraced houses next door to each other where they're on the same level. They're like on different levels. Oh, the roofs really? are different. So it's Whoa. a really quirky. Um, cottage type, yeah. type feel and I think that put a lot of people off but I was like see? and uh, may, uh, maybe I'm um, I don't know I'm just a bit adventurous and I could see the potential <laughs> in it it's going to be an amazing house and my investor he's in he was already in property and he does a lot of um, a lot of 
uh, refurbishments and and flips. So right. so he could also see the potential, and he was really excited by it. So we're spending about forty five thousand pounds on the on the refurb, right. and then the profits looking about forty five thousand as well. So Brilliant. and those are similar figures to the one that I've got going through conveyancing. So he he's happy because he's getting a good return on on his money. Yeah, I'm happy, so I'm getting a good return as well. And yeah, you know. and your your brain, which you love to bits, that's is it. getting a lot of fun from yeah, it. Yeah, well. that's it. I've got the I I, just, I love going it, I love going into a property when it's got an old gas fire, horrible carpets. <laughs> Like, <laughs> you the, posted some amazing pictures. Yeah. Actually. One of the ones I remember is, is, I don't know if it's in a kitchen, but there's like a shelf and there's all these old bottles, all yeah. like old jars and ja stuff. Yeah. Like, what has she found? Actually, that was the one where I completed in two and a half weeks. And that's was quite it? a nice story, actually, because the, the guy who owned it, he was in his 80s. Right. And his um, he, he got a girlfriend who was also in her 80s and they wanted to move in together. And oh, she's well, basically said to him, you can move in, but you're bringing one suitcase. You're not bringing all that <laughs> stuff. He'd got like hundreds and hundreds of videos, loads of jars of marbles, just like <laughs> antique, so much furniture, just loads and loads of stuff. And she was like, you're not bringing it. <laughs> I'm not moving in there and you're not bringing that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Oh, so he just brilliant. like brought his uh, one suitcase <coughs> of stuff and left everything else. So yeah, it was... Uh, you get some amazing stories. Yeah, don't you? definitely. Do you like that part of it as well, the, the, kinda, the people part of it? And getting to know them and their stories and things. Yeah, yeah. that's it. It's it. Sometimes it can be a bit of a, a counselling job because you do get people who've got a lot of sort of financial difficulties, or they're having relationship difficulties. They may, right. like they're going through a divorce. Or um, I had I, I went to see a lady yesterday. She's moving up to to Glasgow. Uh, no, not Glasgow, Edinburgh, with her right. with her husband. So she she wants just a nice, quick and easy sale so that they can move on to his new job. Uh, they don't want the hassle of having to to wait for somebody else's house to sell and, and then all these views and getting in and a, a chain, chain and, and everything and then, else. and then one yeah. person pulls out and the whole chain collapses and they exactly. just don't want that hassle so yeah. then if I'm able to step in there and mm -hmm. and solve their their problem then that's a brilliant I point you know that. a lot of people don't realize that if they're, if they're just you know listening in and they wonder well, wait a minute I just I sold my house through on the stage and I did such and such you know why would people sell things off market why would I be able to do a fair but a good deal. How, how is that even possible? Well, this is why. Yeah. There's so many people in so many different situations. And that's a perfect one there. You know, there's someone, It's not a, that's not a vulnerable position one that we were talking about a while ago that some negative people do. That's someone just trying to move and it's because of a job and it's a positive thing. And what they do not want is that dream stop? Yeah. They don't want this nonsense. They don't want to deal with, you know, a hundred people traipsing in and out of their house doing viewings and stuff. They don't want to know, oh, we've got a deal, we've got a sale, this is great. And then one week before they moved to Edinburgh, someone's on the phone saying, nah, sorry, the chain collapsed, you're back to square one. Yeah. What? They don't want that. That's it. And it so ends up costing them someone. more in the long run, doesn't it? Because exactly. it's like, okay, well, well, actually, we've still got to move because we've made this commitment. We've got a rental property lined up yeah. and we've got a job lined up. So yep. now we're left in a situation where we've got an empty house down in, in Yorkshire and yep. we're, we're all the way up in, in Scotland. And yep. It's not going to work for us. It's going to end up costing a fortune. So, yeah, exactly. so if we can then swoop in and, and buy that quickly so they've not got that financial burden, then... Uh, it makes their life a lot easier. It certainly does, and you're you're helping them. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's amazing. I was <laughs> I was just reflecting on how life gives you a kick in so many ways, and then you just nicely respond to it because yeah. you know your whole tragedy with the family we discussed, and then you start your business in Corona. <laughs> it's just like, my God, yeah. if someone's got excuses to stop or to quit, you've got them all yeah. there. You can play those cards quite rightly. Say no, no, that this this isn't going to work for me. But you've not done that. No. You've just kept going, and I love that. That's it. You know? And it, it's, it is a, it's not all easy. It is a roller coaster of a, yeah. uh, a journey. And there's some weeks where I've got deals falling through. Yeah. I did actually the bank holiday weekend on the Friday. Mm -hmm. I had a really good deal lined up, and then I found out that it wasn't, it wasn't going to go through. That was where they, they were, they were splitting up, and the, um, the ex wasn't playing ball and wasn't uh. providing his ID and. It, um, decided he actually didn't want to sell it, so that that fell through. But then right. on the on the Saturday, I had someone contact me from a, f a few weeks prior. He, his house had been on right move. He then decided actually I'm just going to renovate it myself, so he pulled it off. Ah, but then he couldn't right. find a builder to do the work for him, and he thought actually this is more complicated than I thought. See. So we'd exchanged numbers. He gave me a call and said, are you, "Are you still interested? Do you want it?" So yeah, I've got that one lined up. And then the next day, I had a, a contact on Facebook. 
um, contacted me and say she'd got one for for sale. So within but like I mean, the space of three days, <laughs> yeah. <I'll> ha- <laughs> what is going it's, on here? Yeah, it's crazy. You're just waiting for the next call. I've got good news. Yeah. Oh, you know, brilliant. What is it? I've got bad news. Oh, geez. Oh, what is it? Now? That's it. And I think that's why like having such a, a strong mindset is is so important because otherwise you just you just wouldn't be able to deal with it. And I do have some weeks where I'm like, why am I doing this? I should yeah. just like pack it pack it all in and just get an easy job. Find an easier life. Yeah, but yeah. I don't I don't yeah. want an easy life. I think that's nah. uh, boring. Yeah. <laughs> How are the kids coping with it all? Yeah, brilliantly. Yeah, my um my little girl, she's a she's a superstar. She's like she's been so sort of brave throughout the out the journey and everything and she yeah. she didn't miss a, a day from school when when, when her, her dad passed away so really? it was just I can't, tried to keep everything as normal as possible for yeah. her and I think she could see like that I, how I was dealing with things and I think that helped her yeah. she uh, she had a bit of a, a bad patch it was the beginning of last year when her best friend left her school so oh. she was I think she, it was that feeling of loss again so we yeah, got, exactly. her, got her a bit of um, counselling like play therapy and then that really brought her back out of her a oh, shell and she's doing brilliantly you. and uh, my little boy is just crazy he just runs Joshua's around. crazy oh now, yeah you now, know, I know this first hand because we do <laughs> listeners listening in we do these kind of special support calls every week and we've had lots of fun with a, a noisy background yeah, noise from every Joshua. time I've got something really good to check in with <laughs> Joshua just decides that no he wants the telly turning over and <laughs> <laughs> He's a star, an absolute yeah. star. So challenges, we've discussed some of them, you know, the deals falling through at the last minute and phone calls with things and stuff, life kicking you as well. Yeah. Right, take take some of this and try this, Rochelle. What's been the satisfactions? What's been the wee milestones and the things you look back on and go, oh, I was really delighted with that or I was chuffed to bits with that. What ones stick out for you? Uh, this one that you invited oh, me on, on this the week podcast. Oh, I like yeah. that. I like I was, that. I've all, I remember sort of when I was at Protégé and I'd, I'd seen a few of the, of the episodes and everything and I thought, I want to be on that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be there when I know I'm doing quite well when, uh, when Richard <laughs> invites me on. You certainly are doing well, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so obviously that's it. I, I, I love the... I love being able to help other people, so I, I enjoy right. talking to other people in the in the protege tribe and giving them advice and Brilliant. and that sort of thing. That's a, a real satisfaction for me. So even the, although I, I love the the property side of things, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying building my brand and sort of getting my name out there. And then yeah. I've I've had it recently where a few people have been like I've been out and about and people are like, are you Rochelle Gilbert? Oh no yeah, way! Can I get your autograph? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I think that just uh, like lots of people seeing how how uh, saying that I'm doing well, and that's a really nice uh, feeling to have that acknowledgement. And uh, that's brilliant. Yeah, makes me feel proud of my myself. And I yeah. think sometimes you can be hard on yourself and be like, oh, I'm not quite where I wanted to be, and I'm not quite achieving those goals that I've set. But then actually, yeah. the goals that I set are usually like ridiculously high. But I'm like, well, I want to I want to aim high and try and achieve that's those goals, sad. and it's better than. Um, you know, aiming just aiming low, yeah, staying just safe plodding along. And, uh, that's it. Ho hum type thing. Yeah. yeah. No, good on you. I love that. What's the future? Have we got different plans? Are we just growing what we're already doing? Have you get oh, I fancy trying one of these projects or doing one of this things? What have we got in our yeah, heads? Yeah, so I've um, I've been doing a, a joint venture with Ellie and Mark Mackay where they they're um, they've got a house that's on four stories and they're right. converting it into four luxury apartments. Ah, right. So that's what that one's about, right? Because yeah. I saw a wee picture of this. You talked about this. You've got the the shell almost ripped back. Yeah. And you're saying this is going to become four high end apartments ah, that's it right. so they're sort of t- teaching obviously I'm you know I'm only just finishing my my first renovation so that's a, a big massive project for me so yeah. like getting to see how that that progresses and what needs to go into it and, and that side of things because I would like to eventually do some big sort of commercial to residential really where yeah, you got that in your head. I love the thought of um Building, uh, doing new builds as well. So oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you've got a lot so, in your head. Yeah, okay. that's it. And I want. I've got my my um, sort of property sourcing com- uh, company, and uh-huh. I, I, I'm obviously like a, a one man band. I've got a few people doing different things for me, um, like um, social media wise and everything. Yeah. Um, but I want to build that into a, a big company, and I don't necessarily want to work in that because I then want. I, I enjoy more the investor side of things and the networking. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's where I see my future building building my my personal brand more right. and going out and doing. 
You're quite the networker. Yeah. Yeah, we're discussing just before we started <laughs> filming there. Uh, you've got all so you've lined up everything. You've travelled up here, which is great to have you, but you're not just doing that. You've got no. all these connections, you're meeting people afterwards, you're meeting people over the weekend, all sorts of stuff. In a bad way, you're the party girl of the group. I, I need to keep an eye on you because you're a bad influence on people. <laughs> but in a good way, yeah. you've got those connections and you nurture those relationships along. That's yeah. it. I've uh, I've made so many friends in, in property that yeah. I'm you know, I've got friendships with them but I'm also doing uh, doing deals with them I've got a couple of people that I've sourced properties for mm -hmm. elsewhere and you know working working together and building those relationships which is is nice and That's fab yeah yeah do you like that part of the the JVs you spoke about that partnership getting together and doing something do you like that part of it as well yeah that definitely kind of I think it's um, thing, yeah? pulling on different people's sort of experiences and and expertise and that sort of yeah. thing so you can learn a lot from from other people and, uh -huh. and I enjoy that sort of watching okay what what are they doing what's working for them how can I use that to make my my business better yeah you're on okay yeah got that awareness That's you're observing it. things and I think that helps sort of with the with my LinkedIn profile and everything I was watching Ellie and seeing how good she was doing and she uh, and seeing her post and I'm like okay so I've seen what she's done and the consistency that she's done it with I right. then need to to mirror that and do it in my own way but sort of use that as inspiration to yeah. to build up my profile and and that's worked really well for me so I it's like it. I like yeah. it. So if uh, folks are listening in specifically, they want to sell their house, you know, down your whole area in Yorkshire and stuff, or maybe they're listening in, they're the investors you spoke about, you know, uh, especially these folks, as you say, down in London where they can't buy anything yeah. with their money, it's just <laughs> to forget it, you know. Have you got space that you'd be able to, you know, chat to them and see about people? Yeah, you know, yeah, your full definitely. capacity. No, brilliant, no, it's uh, brilliant. Good. What, what I love about this is one minute I'll be like, I've got too many investors. I've got to find all these properties for these investors, <laughs> and then the next minute I've got too many properties and not enough investors. <laughs> I need to find more investors, and it's it's constantly like like that. So I'm always yeah. looking to to talk to people, and a lot of people I'll, I'll talk to them, and they're not quite quite ready yet, and it might be a couple months down the line, and then I'll right. speak to them again, and and they are ready. Yeah, you know, but yeah. I'm always open to talk to people and I love giving people advice whether they like it or not <laughs> <laughs> oh God. there you go folks you heard her uh, if you want to hook in with her connect with Rochelle you know get a chat with her see about maybe you want to invest or you're struggling to sell your home you're not getting anywhere with an estate agent this lady's got the business for you as well that's all good yeah. Final wee question on the market in general, your opinions, your things, what you're seeing on the ground level and stuff. Where do you see the rest of the year going? Any any thoughts? Yeah, so obviously at the moment with the with the market it's it's ridiculous. Like the the, the houses are selling for ridiculous prices and it it's is bonkers. it is much more difficult to, to get a good a good deal. Mm -hmm. Um but it is it is possible. Mm -hmm. I think at some point the, the bubbles sort of got to pop and prices are gonna start going down. Right. But I don't think it's a, a scary thing. I don't think anything's gonna fall off the, the edge of the cliff at the yeah. moment. We've just not got enough people putting the houses on the market. And the way that I see it is that, so I was considering selling my house, but then I'm looking, okay, so if I sold my house, where would I move to? And because mm. there's not enough houses on the market, mm -hmm. I struggle to find something that I want. So that then puts me yeah. off selling selling my house. Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah, and then I'm like, okay, well, I could rent, but the rental market's so crazy that it's really difficult to get a rental property. So I'm right. like, okay, well, I'm better just staying put. Right. So I'm not putting my house on the market. And then you've got other people who maybe they're not quite sure whether they're they're going to have a job to to for the foreseeable future yeah. because you've got everything going on with like once the furlough payments end yeah. like once everything opens back up properly our business is going to survive or they're going to start to go go under yeah. so people have not got that security so i don't think as many people are sort of upgrading the houses or they're not right. they, you know so they're not putting their house on the market so i think once that sort of um security comes back and people are more confident in in what's going on more people start putting the house on the market and then the the scales will and tip, won't they? Again. And um, you've got the the there'll be plenty of choices for the buyers, so the sellers will have to start dropping the the prices yeah, and the prices yeah. are just and so on. Yeah, so That's it's it. that just that typical it's, supply demand. Yeah, thing. it's interesting yeah. to watch, and I think everyone's got their their own opinion. I've spoke to some people who think it's going to be seven years of house prices going like this. Right. 
and then you've got other people who think as soon as the stamp duty ends and the, the furlough ends that it's just going to drop suddenly but I, yeah. I think it's more going to be a, a, a gradual a gradual, a gradual da yeah so right. it's just, um, just but, so when I'm talking to my investors I'm telling them you know it's more about just making sure you, you're buying buying right now yes. yeah yes. so not, not paying the crazy prices for the, yeah. the properties you need that's to right. not getting carried away with the emotion yeah, and the nonsense that goes it. on yeah. I mean yeah. it's been brilliant for me for the all the offers I had accepted before Christmas because mm. now they're worth a lot more so actually I was um, I, I wasn't annoyed but I was a bit like uh, <laughs> so my investor the other day told me I'd found him a property before Christmas it was right. supposed to have about 10,000 to 15,000 pounds left in the property once he bought it cash and then he, he, he got a mortgage on it right. so it was supposed to leave a 10 to 15,000 pound deposit and he managed to he put 101,000 pounds in it and he got 97,000 pounds back and I was like that's not the deal I sold you <laughs> I'm, like, I'm really pleased for you but I'd have probably but... kept, yeah but that's not what I sold yet. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So, yeah, Just so shows it's possible. That's it. Everyone's doing really well well mm. from it. So That's fantastic. It's, uh, it's good. I'm you. happy that my investors uh, investors won. And um, yeah. obviously the, the sellers were happy because he bought that property really quickly because they were, they were moving into a council house. They couldn't afford the, ah, right. to keep their house anymore. And they didn't couldn't afford to keep both houses on at the same time. So right. he came in and bought that really quickly and has, uh, has got a good deal from it and Brilliant. they've moved on and, and I, they've moved on and obviously well. I got my, my fee so it was one yeah. of those where we have all, all won it's what mm -hmm. you spoke about yeah that's, it, it. that's perfect scenario when yeah. you're helping all the different people involved no one's getting messed about I love that yeah. good on you that's a nice wee story to end it with mm -hmm. we finally got you on the show yeah I love it <laughs> you're far too busy but it's good to, to get you in so uh, hopefully we'll see you in the future and you can tell me about some of these more kind of commercial properties Definitely. you know maybe we'll see that with your twists and turns hopefully not too many more twists and turns in life right no, let's no, just try it. and keep, keep that a bit nice more and, stable and steady yes <laughs> so for today thank you Rochelle thank you well I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did remember with the guests that you just saw go into the show notes for the page because all of the links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information and talking about getting more information more guests more insights more knowledge etc make sure you're subscribed get the subscription done get the notifications on and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out so thanks for tuning to this week in property